Hi friends, here in this video, I'll explain what is a pressure diagram. Pressure diagram means it is a graphical representation which gives us the value of total pressure and center of pressure acting on one side of the tank. And for that, first I'll draw the diagram and then I'll explain. So here we have a tank in which there are two different liquids. I have taken an example that here there is water over that there is oil and it is an open tank. The surface of the oil is subjected to atmospheric pressure. So here is the height of the oil column. Denoted as H suffix oil, and similarly, we have the height of water column H suffix water. Now, basically, what we have to find out here is how much is the pressure exerted by both the liquids acting on one side of the tank that is on this vertical face. So, in order to get that, first we need to find out the intensity of pressure. So, intensity of oil pressure, that is the pressure exerted by the oil since it has height of H and that will be given by that pressure I would be denoting it as P suffix 1 which is given by the formula rho g h that is for oil. So by using this formula we can get the intensity of pressure where rho is the density of oil which we can get it from the specific gravity and specific gravity of oil if it is given we can multiply it with 1000 that is the density of water to get the density of oil. So, for an example, suppose if the specific gravity is 0 0.8, then we have to multiply with 1000. That gives us the value as 800, which is the density of oil. So, depending upon the specific gravity, the density of oil can be calculated. Then H of oil is this height. So, we can get the intensity of oil pressure, which would be acting on this surface of water. Then similarly, the intensity of water pressure. It would be rho g h of water where the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube g is 9.81 h is the height of this water column. So in this way we can get the pressure intensity. Now I will be drawing the pressure diagram projecting this oil surface similarly for water and the bottom of the tank. Here I am drawing a vertical line. Now as we see that at the top there is atmospheric pressure. The surface is exposed to atmosphere. So when we are taking these pressure intensities, these are called as the gauge pressures. So for gauge pressure, atmospheric pressure is the reference. So at the surface we can say that the pressure is zero. That is the atmospheric pressure is taken as the reference. In actual the atmospheric pressure is not zero. But since we are taking the gauge pressures, for that the reference is atmospheric. So at the surface, we are assuming the pressure as zero. And the moment we go inside the fluid, the pressure intensity would go on increasing. Like for example, for oil, as we see here, the pressure intensity increases with height. That is at the surface, the pressure is zero. But the moment we go inside the oil, the pressure would go on increasing 
and it is a gradual increase as we can see here so up till here what we are getting that is the pressure intensity p1 which is acting on this water surface exerted by the oil so i'll quickly write that it is pressure p1 then this pressure would be acting constantly on water so the oil is exerting a constant pressure on the water surface so here we are getting a rectangle then there is water surface which is starting after the completion of this height of oil column so the pressure intensity exerted by water it will start from where the oil ends so at this surface the intensity of pressure exerted by water is zero where it height its height starts and the moment we go inside the water column the height goes on increasing so the pressure intensity also increases gradually and reaches a maximum value at the bottom which is p2 so this is the pressure diagram and from this pressure diagram we can get the total pressure exerted first by oil so for that i'll write the formula and what i'll do here is i'll divide these area as we can see we are getting two right angle triangles and a rectangle here so this triangle would be denoted as 1 area 1 the rectangle would be area second and this triangle would be area third for simplification now the total pressure exerted or total pressure is also called as hydrostatic force because it is by name it is total pressure but it is a hydrostatic force so i'll write down let f1 be the total pressure also called as hydrostatic force acting on area 1 similarly f2 and f3 are the total pressure or the hydrostatic force acting on area 2 and area 3 respectively so i have indicated these forces now how to get these forces starting with f1 by looking into this pressure diagram here we see this is a pressure diagram for area 1 we can see there is a right angle triangle so the force would be equal to the area of the right angle triangle which is half into base into height and base we can see here it is p1 so half into base which is p1 into height which is the height of the oil column as we see here it, it is h suffix oil so area multiplied by the width of the tank and here the force which we would be getting it can have a unit of newton or kilonewton depending upon the unit of pressure i am just taking an example that if this pressure is in terms of newton per meter square so if p1 is in terms of newton per meter square the height of oil column would be in terms of meter and the width of the tank also in terms of meter so meter in meter is meter square so here meter square and meter square gets cancelled out so the unit is newton which is nothing but the unit of force so we have found out hydrostatic force f1 similarly i can get f2 and here we see that area 2 is a rectangle so that would be the base into height that is p1 into the height of water column so p1 
into the height of water column multiplied by the width of the tank and in a similar manner I would be getting the hydrostatic force F3 and here also we are getting a right angle triangle so half into base into height for this triangle base is P2 and the height is H of water half into base into height into the width of the tank so in this way F1, F2 and F3 would be calculated and the total pressure would be the addition of all these forces so total pressure acting on one side of the tank will be denoted by F is equal to the addition of all these forces. So the total pressure would be calculated and now we need to get the location of this total pressure. So for that first F1 I will indicate where this F1 is acting. F1 is the hydrostatic force for the first area for rectangle 1 and it would be acting at, it, at its centroid so for a right angle triangle of height h the centroid is at h by 3 distance so here is the point of location of f1 at a distance of h by 3 i'll say and this height is remember it is for oil column so h by 3 from this base and hence from the top it would be 2h by 3 next here we have a rectangle and its cg or the centroid is exactly at half of the height so it would be f2 would be acting at half of the height and remember this is the height of water column h by 2 after that here we have a right angle triangle and it is having a height of water as we see here so its hydrostatic force would be acting again at one third distance so that is the point of location of F3 which is at h by 3 distance from the base so these are the location of F1, F2 and F3 now we need to find the location of the total hydrostatic force which is F for that I would be taking the moments of all these forces about the free liquid surface. I will say that this is the free liquid surface. So to get the location and that location of total pressure would be given by H star as I have indicated here. So for that taking taking moments of all forces about the free liquid surface. So I will write down it is the summation of moment and that would be equal to the moment of the resultant force which is nothing but F that is the total pressure into its distance is nothing but h star that is the moment of the result resultant we can also say that this is by Varignon's theorem of moments so therefore now to get the summation starting with f1 i'll take the moment on the free liquid surface so it would be f1 into 2h by 3 as we can see here moment is force into perpendicular distance so it would be f1 in this direction into 2h by 3 plus f2 now the distance of force f2 from the free liquid surface here we have height of oil column plus h by 2 distance because we have to take this distance so the moment would be acting in this direction and the total height is height of oil plus h by 2 so 
height of oil plus h by 2 of water here also i'll write down suffix oil because the height was of oil column for f1 now similarly for f3 the height is we can see here it is this total height which is i can say it is height of oil column plus from the bottom it is h by 3 so from the apex of this triangle it would be 2h by 3 so in short it becomes the h of oil plus 2h by 3 for water so that is the left hand side now on to the right hand side is the total pressure f into h star that is the moment of the resultant we can say and by using this equation we can get the value of h star which is the location of the total pressure from the free liquid surface it means the point at which the total hydrostatic force acts so in short that was the explanation regarding this pressure diagram as mentioned it is a graphical representation and graphically we have found out the total pressure and center of pressure at the end if you'll find my videos helpful you can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching